Good morning, dear students. In my previous video, we have already described various classes of functions. And those classes of functions where some of the algorithms are having constant time complexity, logarithmic time complexity, linear time complexity, quadratic time complexity, cubic time complexity, or it may be sometimes in terms of exponential. In today's class, we are going to compare this class of function, which function is going to take more time or less time that we are going to evaluate. To explain so, I have taken four classes of functions. One is n log n, n raise to 2 and 2 raise to n. Say for an example, if the value of n is 1, in that case, the value of log n will be equal to 0. The value of n square will be 1 as 1 square is equal to 1. The value of 2 raised to n will be equal to 2. Now, as you can observe here, there is no difference between the functions having value n or n square as both are looking same at this point of time. But as the value of n is increasing, now here we can see the difference between n and n square. And we can clearly observe here, the n square is going to take more time compared to n. And even this 2 raised to n function is going to take maximum amount of time compared to the function log n and and n square. So, this is the clearly the comparison of various classes of function. One is less than log n, is less than square root of n, is less than n, is less than n log n, is less than n square, is less than n cube, right? is again less than 2 raised to n, is less than 3 raised to n, dot dot up to is less than n raised to n. In general, we can say this, that the value of n raised to k is less than the value of 2 raised to n, that we can clearly observe here. Now, to represent the same thing on a graph, we are plotting on an x axis the size of the input. The size of the input that I have mentioned here is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 and 80. On a y axis, the running time in milliseconds is being described. And as we can see here, for this cubic graph, the growth is abruptly increasing for even smaller value of n. Right? And it is not the case with this linear or order of n log n. Right? And as we have already described in our other classes that we should focus on improving the algorithm right? and we should try to use the algorithm which is having less time complexity. Now, it is again the same thing is represented here very clearly using a graph where you can observe the growth of order of one function algorithm is less compared to order of log n and is less compared to order of root n. So, if your algorithm complexity falls here is somewhere, right? So, it is a good algorithm, right? And if your complexity of your algorithm falls here in this somewhere, right? It is not that much good function or improved algorithm. You should try to focus in design an algorithm such that it falls somewhere here. Now, when we are describing all such things, there is an important notation that we are considering that is called asymptotic notation. And to represent the asymptotic notation, we are using big O notation, big omega notation 
and big return. The main purpose of asymptotic notation is to represent the time complexity. Now, what is more important? Either you know that the maximum amount of time your algorithm is going to take or how much minimum amount of time your algorithm is going to take, which is more important. So the most important thing is if you can know that this is the maximum amount of time your algorithm is going to take and that is what is being represented by this big O notation. So, it represents the upper bound. So, we are going to see few examples and the definition of big O notation. So, let us go through the examples and the introduction to this big O notation. Let us assume we are given two functions. One function is f of n. The growth of this particular function is some, some, something like this. And there is one more function g n whose growth is something like this. Now, we have multiplied it with some constant c and that is why it becomes c into g n. Now, you see before this introduction of this n 0 term, before that the growth of both the function can be like anything. But once it reached to certain points n 0, the growth of f of n will never be more than this c g n means what? The value of function f of n is going to be less than c into g n. So, here in this case the value of constant that you have to choose very carefully and it has to be greater than 0. The value of n 0 also should be greater than or equal to 1 because at least one input should be supplied right and for every n greater than or equal to n 0 this condition is going to be true that is f of n is less than or equal to c g n then and only then we can say the function f of n is in order of g of n. The definition will become very much clear when we will go through one example. So, let us take an example. Let us say your given function f of n is equal to 2 n plus 3. Now, as we all know mathematically we can write down 2 n plus 3 is less than 15 n. Now, here in this case you see if we compare this like this if 2 n plus 3 is f of n this n is your g of n in this case the value of c will be equal to 15 and the value of n 0 will be should be greater than or equal to 1 and here this particular case the condition is true that is f of n is less than c into g n that is why we can say the function f of n 2 n plus 3 is in order of n. Now, the same thing we can write down like this as well 2 n plus 3 is less than 5 n and the value of n 0 is greater than or equal to 1 where the c value we have considered it is equal to 5. You see both are the correct thing, but we have to try to find out the closest value of c such that this condition holds and that is why we can say the function f of n is in order of g of n. Let us take one more example function f of n is equal to 3 n plus 2 and g of n it is equal to n. So, let us check whether the function f of n is in order of g of n or not. Now, to become this function in order of g of n this condition required to be true that is f of n should be less than or equal to c into g of n. So, now we have to find out the value of c such that it should be greater than 0 and this condition holds true for any n 0 greater than or equal to 1. So, here in this case 3 n plus 2 should be less or equal to c into g n. Here in this case g of n is n that is why I have written n. So, if I write here 3 n plus 2 is less or equal to 4 n. Here in this case the value of uh, c is equal to 4 right. If I put the value of n equal to 1 what happens? If I put value of n equal to 1 here, it becomes 3 ones are 3 plus 2 is less or equal to 4 into 1, but that condition is not true. In this case, I cannot choose the value of n 0 equal to 1, it should be chosen equal to 2. 
uh, in that case this condition holds true that is why we can say the function f of n is in order of g of n. And once you are able to say that function f of n is in order of n, again it is also in order of n square, also it is going to be in order of n cube and again it is going to be in order of 2 raised to n. As we all know the growth of order of n is no more than the growth of n square n cube or 2 raised to n function. Let us take one more example. Let us check whether this particular function 2n plus 10 is in order of n or not. Now, to hold this particular condition true, 2n plus 10 should be less or equal to cn. Now, if I take this value 2n on this side, so it gives us c minus 2 into n should be greater than or equal to 10. So, here in this case, the value of n or you can say the value of n should be greater than or equal to 10 divided by c minus 2. So, if I put the value of c equal to 3, the value of n 0 will become 10. And for that, this particular condition holds true f of n is less than or equal to c into g n and we can say the function f of n is in order of n. So, there are several more examples, right. So, when you will watch this particular video, you can go through this example after pausing the video, right. Just try to understand all these examples, right. So, I have included some more examples. Some more examples again related to this big O notation I have included. Here you see after the value of n0, the growth of f of n is no more than the growth of c into g of n. The same way as big O notation is used to denote the upper bound. Now, completely the reverse case f of n is should be greater than or equal to c into g n, right. Then we can say the function f of n is in order of omega g of n. To understand that particular thing, if we have to check, let us say the given function is f of n it is equal to 3n plus 2 and the value of g of n is n. So, let us check whether this particular function is in order of omega of g n or not. Now, to hold this particular condition, f of n should be greater than or equal to c into g n. So, here in this case 3n plus 2 should be greater than or equal to c into n. So, here in this case if I choose the value of c equal to 4, right, the condition holds true. That is why we can say the function f of n is in order of omega of g. Now, some more examples related to this uh, big O notation, omega notation I have included in these particular slides. So, you can go through these examples. Now, one more notation that is very uh, tight bound asymptotically that is called theta notation and for that this condition should be true. Now, instead of choosing only one constant, we are going to choose two constant and those constant are C1 and C2 such that this particular condition should be true. The value of C1 should be greater than 0, the value of C2 should be greater than 0, N0 should be greater than 0, the value of C1GN means it is a multiplication of c1 into gn should be less than f of n should be less than c2 into g of n. Then we can say the function f of n is in order of theta g n, right. So, once we are saying that f of n is in order of theta g n, it means what? It means f of n is in order of g of n and g of n is also in order of f of n. In the, this case, we can say f of n is in order of theta g n. So, the one of the examples again related to this omega notation, right. So, it is big omega, right. So, that example is shown here. So, you can go through this particular example. As we have already explained one more example, right. So, I am not describing each and every example. You can pause the video for a moment and you can go through this example. Same way, this is an example 
for theta notation, right? Here you can see after the value of n0, value of n0, the growth of f of n is in between the growth of c1 into gn and the growth of c2 into gn. Means this condition holds true. C1 into Gn is less or equal to f of n is less or equal to C2 Gn for all value of n greater than n0, where C1, C2, and n0 are constant and that are greater than C1. So, here in this case, if we have to check whether it is this particular function 2n plus 5 is in order of theta n or not. So, we have to choose the value of C1 that is equal to 4, right, and the value of C2 it is equal to and for value of n0 greater than or equal to 4, this particular condition holds true and that is why we can say this particular function uh, holds true, right. And that is why we can say this both the function t of n is equal to 2n plus 5 and the value of t of n it is equal to 5 into n square minus 3 into n is also in order of theta n square. Now, there are several important properties of asymptotic notation. f of n is in order of g of n, then we can say if we multiply our function f of n with any constant value a, then also it is going to be order of g of n. Second important property, if f of n it is equal to omega of g of n, then if we multiply a with f of n, is also going to be in order of omega g of n. f of n is in order of theta g n, then we can say a into f of n is also going to be in order of theta g n. Now, there are several properties related to this asymptotic notation and those properties are reflex sieve property, transitive property and symmetric property. So, for reflexive property, the function itself is always going to be the order of itself. So, if your function f of n is equal to n, then we can say n is always in order of n or n square is in order of n square or n cube is in order of n cube. It also holds for the transitive property. f of n is in order of g of n, g of n is in order of h of n, then we can say this transitive property holds that is f of n is in order of h of n. So, let us take an example, if f of n is equal to n, g of n it is equal to n square, h of n is equal to n cube, then we can say n is in order of n square, n square is in order of n cube, then we can say n is also in order of n cube. The transitive property is true for only big O notation and big omega notation. Now, for symmetric property, is true only for the theta notation. Means what? If f of n is in order of theta g n, we can say g of n is also in order of theta f of n. Otherwise, for other big O notation and big omega notation, that symmetric property doesn't hold. One more example, f of n is in order of g of n, right? and f of n is also in order of omega g of n, we can say f of n is in order of theta g n. Let, let me explain last two properties. Let us say one function f of n is in order of g of n and another function d of n is in order of e of n. Now, if I add first two, right, so f of n plus d of n will be in order of maximum of g of n and e of n, right. So, suppose here f of n is n and g of n is n square. Now, here d of n is again n and e of n is again n cube. In this case, here the value of uh, max, maximum value of g of n and e of n will be considered and that is here in this case it is going to be n cube. Same way, f of n is in order of g of n and d of n is in order of e of n, then the multiplication of f of n and d of n 
is always going to be in order of the multiplication of g of n and p of n. So, this big O notation is used for this worst case complexity. So, it gives you the maximum amount of time that your algorithm is going to take for the number of given instance. Average complexity is a average running time, while the base time complexity is the minimum amount of time your algorithm is going to take. Now, so to describe the thing in general graphically, so when the function f of n is in order of g of n, so after this n0, the value of f of n, growth of f of n will not be more than the growth of c into g n. So, we have to be wise enough to choose the value of c and n0 such that the value holds true. Same way for f of n is in order of omega g of n. After the value of n0, the value of f of n should be always greater than or equal to c into g n, right. And same way the here the which condition should be true for theta notation, c1 into g n should be less than or equal to f of n should be less or equal to c2 into g n. 